Hey guys, it's Damo here, and I'm in deep water. Not literally, I'm in the town of deep water. Well, I'm literally in the town of deep water. So yeah, I'm literally in deep water. I'm getting lost in this one, aren't I? So yesterday we rode from the Gold Coast down to deep water, which is in New South Wales, passing through Tenderfield. Took one of the most magnificent routes you can never, you can never hope to ride in the wet. It was absolutely perfect on that crushed granite. And we're on these red rockets, the Honda CRF 450 RL. It used to just be an L, now it's an RL. We've also got some Trans Alps, that's Daryl Beatty's Trans Alp just there. We've got three of these RLs, one is completely stock, one is de-restricted de with a 11-litre um, tank on it as well, and the other one is de-restricted with that tank and also with an FMF pipe. So we've been given a chance to try this bike in a few different guises, and it's a very versatile and a lot of fun, and we'll get into that in more detail right about now. Road or off the ground. The 1983 XR500R is a completely new machine. Meet the granddaddy of the CRF 450 RL. The XR range was wildly popular in the civilized and the uncivilized world. And it garnered a fanatical following by riders who felt that neither the march of time nor technology could possibly produce a better bike. But in Australia, the entire range was killed off in a mass extinction event and the XR riders did not take it well. For a time, there was no direct replacement, but Honda eventually introduced the CRF450X, a bike that would go head-to-head -head with Yamaha's WR450F. Let's just check in quickly with those XR owners and see how they've greeted the new CRF. The X was a good Enduro bike with a better fork than the WR. It turned sharper and had a cool look. Sadly, it wasn't really developed before it too was scrapped in Australia, and once again, we were left without a 450 Honda Enduro bike. But in 2018, Honda introduced the CRF 450L, which was a little unfairly derided for its lack of horsepower against its overly roided up competition. It didn't really find a space to shine and we barely got to know it before it too was dropped in 2020. And once again, we found ourselves on our wide brown island without a Honda 450 trail bike. But then, something happened. And that something was Jet Lawrence. Within the span of a single motocross season in the US, he made fans lose their goddamn minds and thirst for a Honda 450 motocross machine. While the trail bike family were left patiently waiting once again. Enter the 2024 CRF 450 RL. A bike that may look familiar and that would be because the main difference between it and the L model is the extra R in the name. We caught up with Daryl Beatty of Daryl Beatty Adventures to take three different CRF 450 RL builds out for a two day ride. And I'll let Daz take it from here and explain how he uses the 450 in his tours. From our experience at Daryl Beatty Adventures with the L model, uh, which we put a lot of kilometers on, over 32,000 Ks on my 450, we found that they're just a really cool little mini adventure bike. So the 450RL for adventure stuff for what we do with Daryl Beatty Adventures, remembering as well we run a support truck, so we sort of sit in that happy medium what we provide the customer, which is awesome for still having fun. We run, compared to the standard model, which that is there, that's completely stock. On what we do, we run a uh, three-gallon tank from the US from IMS. Um, it gives you roughly a bit over 200k range. And depending on what you do, whether that's in the bush or the deep sand in the desert, that range varies a lot. But you generally get over 200k's uh, out of that tank, which is good for what we do. Um, we change the seat, which we're going to change on this one. We run a, a little bit different seat. We run an exhaust system and we run a vortex ignition. So it just livens them up a fair bit, takes a restriction out. Uh, we run that for the lead and the sweep rider. And for the customers, we also run the tanks, but we run just the standard exhaust with the ignition on them. And we just find they're just really tractable uh, in the varying conditions we do, whether it's in the desert or in Cape York on that red clay. Um, they're really tractable with that setup. We left Tambourine Mountain near Queensland's Gold Coast and took on a few bitumen Ks, the spot of big rig wrestling, till we made it finally to the dirt. The skies were threatening to do something nasty and I was happy to be wearing my Liat Hydrogy jacket for just such an occasion. 
After a while, we stopped for a quick catch-up amongst dedicated professionals. Hello! Alas, we were talking for too long and the rains finally caught up with us and proceeded to turn the dirt roads into rivers of chocolate milk. Mmm, chocolate milk. The best thing about riding in this kind of downpour is that once you're wetter than an otter's pocket, you can't get any wetter, so you might as well just have some fun. Had some good storms, as you can see. You know, I've got little rags, cleaning goggles. Now the, the roads are mint, as you can see. The heaps of crossings through here, so it's fun. It's been closed for a while, so it's back over, which is super good. Conditions like this can be a challenge, and, and often not all that much fun on a bigger bike with 100 horsepower or more and over 200, 250 kilos of metal to wrestle. On the CRF 450 RL, though, we were having a blast, and no one was complaining about the conditions. The bikes felt light and nimble, never overpowering. There are no electronics to dial in. There isn't even ABS. So it's all about the ride and how filthy you get. We're in the little town just between Wooden Bong and Tenderfield, and I'm not sure what it's called. I think it's called Numpty. It's very famous for a couple of things. One, a cyclone that blew through here in 1978, around about October. In fact, it was October 14. And the interesting thing was, the only thing that went missing was a bong and a bintang singlet. We eventually left Numpty and the rains behind us and enjoyed tracks that are pretty skaty in the dry, but are absolutely come alive in the wet. We even got to see a little bit of bull biffo along the way. Yeah, have a go, you ca And then Daz caught on camera my near-death moment with a kamikaze kangaroo. Oh, that was close. We stopped in at Tenderfield for some fuel, some food, and a goggle refresh. <laughs> and then headed on our way to the town of Deepwater. It just happens to be one of the most magnificent routes between the two towns. Of the three different builds we had with us on the ride, the stock bike was obviously the most restricted. And that opens it up to criticism against the roided up rage machines in the 450 Enduro class. But it's a great lambs option, which is really important and it's a good choice for riders looking to ease their way onto the dirt. De-restrict the RL and add the Vortex ignition and the larger tank, and you've got a bike with a very sensible and usable amount of power that you can take exploring further afield. Add the FMF system and it'll ease the RL's heavy engine braking. It'll smooth the power delivery off the bottom and of course, you'll gain some mumbo across the rev range in the process. Certainly enough to shake your GoPro loose. Oh, the guy, 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 guy. If you don't respect your equipment, you don't get anything new to play with. After a pretty amazing day of riding that had everything from light drizzle to a downpour that makes you wonder if you should be herding two of every kind of animal into an arc, it was good to pull into the top pub at Deepwater. Welcome, Deepwater. Thanks, Damo. Hey, guy. We wasted little time in heading to the bar for a couple of beers and a Hall of Fame schnitzel. This was top shelf. Sauna, eh? Step in, mate. Let's fucking make this happen. For sure. Oh, what goes on tour stays on tour. Hey, let's divert our attention back to these nice shiny red bikes. It's not a stretch to say that the 450 RL is fighting for a similar space to Suzuki's DRZ400. Another bike that's proven itself to be incredibly versatile and durable. The DRZ is just over $1,500 cheaper, and it has a less intensive maintenance schedule, with the RL being hungry for an oil change every thousand kilometers if you stick to the book. They'll both give you around 150 kilometers of fuel range, but the CRF provides better power figures. It has better suspension, it's lighter, it doesn't vibrate as much, and most importantly for me, I think it has a six-speed gearbox and not a five-speed like the DRZ. Both bikes actually have pretty ordinary seats, although the CRF is one of the worst seats I've ever jumped on. 
but also both bikes come to life with some fairly simple mods and there are quite a few aftermarket pieces available for both. The DRZ obviously has been around a great deal longer, but the CRF 450 RL will benefit from what came before it with just the L model and you can get all sorts of luggage options and protection options and performance options for your RL. And finally, it's a very simple bike. So you don't need a computer engineering degree to be able to just work the electronics. There are no electronics. There is no ABS, there is no traction control. You just ride this thing with your right wrist. And if somewhere down the line you should want an increase of cubic centimeters in your life, then the Transalp is a fine next option. But thinking of the CRF 450 RL as an adventure or extended sort of dual sport bike, there is one component that deserves some criticism and that's the god awful seat. You want to move away from that seat as quickly as possible unless you have a bunghole of granite. Of the three bikes we had, most of us were drawn towards the one with the seat concepts replacement seat and a lot of that had to do with the comfort factor. It's also got the FMF system on it, but the real draw card was that more comfortable seat. These bikes have been fantastic and what I really appreciate about These bikes have been fantastic and what I really appreciate about <laughs> I appreciate it, <bro. laughs> These bikes have been fantastic and what I really appreciate about this test is that we've had three bikes to ride and one being stock, one being slightly modified and one being more modified, not completely modified, but it gives you a range of a scope of what you can actually do on this bike and it starts with the beginner and it ends with someone like us who've got more experience riding and adventure riding and absolutely enjoying it. I can hear a cow expressing his joy for this same bike at the moment. So you start with your lambs bike, it's a basic restricted bike and it feels like a beginner's bike. You take that, uh, de-restrict it, put the larger tank on it, you've got greater range and you've progressed as a rider. But then when you even get better, you can put that FMF pipe on there, it smooths out the compression braking, it gives you a bit more mid-range push as well and it sounds fantastic. And there you've got a bike that's taking you from the beginning right to a bike that can take you just about damn near anywhere and I think that's a brilliant concept. And I've got to throw some love at a piece of kit here. I was wearing the Ballard's Off-Road Gas and Guzzle Hydration Pack, which has a two litre water bladder, 10 litres of storage, and a super comfortable strap system. Now that's something you're gonna to wanna to get your hands on as we ride through summer. On our run back into Queensland, I reflected a little bit on riding a 450. I used to ride 450s just about every weekend and often during the week as well in my job as a dirt bike magazine editor. Yeah, I know, lucky me but I actually haven't touched one for about three years. And part of the reason is that they've become too aggressive for my liking. And I don't want a race bike, I want a trail bike. The CRF 450RL fills that role beautifully, except for the seat. Ah uh, yes, except for the seat. But with that wide ratio gearbox, it opens the Honda up to being quite a natural feeling adventure option. And if you really want to spank your wallet like a bad, bad donkey and take your build all the way, and you can transform the RL into a beast like this with a kit from Rebel X Sports. I'd love to see Honda give the RL a bit of rally treatment as it did with the 300. I'd love to give it a crack with the suspension from the RX model installed too. It's not an absolutely perfect package, what is, but riding the RL has convinced me that it is a valuable option for riders that don't want a heavy beast or aren't yet experienced or confident in the dirt. But it's also something that I would very much like to have as at least a second option in my garage. There's a lot of fun to be had on the RL, so let's hope this one sticks around for a while.